All right. So here we're going to be talking about the law of cosines. So the law of cosines is uh, is the following. So a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc times cosine of a. So, and then here, since it really didn't matter, um, a, b, c, little a, little b, little c. If I if I drew the same triangle, and I called this c and this c and this this a and this little a and this b and this little b. Mathematically speaking, these are the same, right? These are the same, right? And so here, if you just swap out this, it all ends up being the same. So if you memorize one, you kind of know what the rest of them are. So let's solve for a triangle. So here, here's a triangle where I know the side, the side, the side, right? So I can solve for this. Well, how am I going to do this? Well, I'm going to just use the law of, I'm going to use the law of uh, cosines to, um, I'm going to use the law of cosines to figure out one of the angles. And then there, I can either use the law of cosines again to figure out a different angle, or I can use, at that point, I can start using the law of sines. Either works, right? Um, so let's just do that. So let's draw our triangle. So here we're going to have 5 is A. We're going to have B is 8. I'm always going to draw it the same way, just so um, and C is equal to 12. That way I don't get you guys confused but maybe I should move them around so you get used to moving them around. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for cosine of A. So cosine of A, um, is equal to, so here, cosine of A, I'm going to minus this across, minus this across and divide by this. Um, so that's so the negative sign. If I solve for that, it's just going to end up being equal to b squared plus c squared. Oops, make that look like a b. Minus a squared all over 2bc. And in fact, this isn't a bad thing to write down and have somewhere. Um, because if I'm looking for an angle, this is quicker than solving it from here every time. And in fact, I can actually just write it as if I wanted to be very fancy, I could write as cosine of minus the inverse cosine, a is equal to the inverse cosine of b squared plus c squared minus a squared over 2bc. And you can also write it as that. Well, given this, we can crunch through those numbers, right? So a is equal to the inverse cosine of uh, b would be 8 squared plus c, which would be 12 squared, minus 5 squared, which is our a, all divided by 2 times b, which is 8, times c, which is 12. Crunch that through a calculator. Um, and we roughly get this is equal to 18 degrees, OK? If we crunch it through a calculator. So I know one of the degrees here. I know a is 18 degrees. Now from here, I could do the cosine of b. So I could do the cosine of b is equal to, or b is equal to the inverse cosine. And here, everywhere, here if I'm swapping b's, I'm going to start where I swap b's and a's. And so here I'll have a squared minus, or plus c squared minus b squared all over 2ac. And so if I did that, I get the following. I get b is equal to the inverse cosine, or, cos or arc cosine, depending on how you like to say it, of 5 squared plus 12 squared minus 8 squared all over 2 times 5 times 12. And then if I crunch that through, I get this equal to roughly 29 degrees. And then from here, I have 180 minus 18 degrees minus 29 degrees gives me 133 degrees. And so here I formed my triangle. So I know everything. And so that, and that's equal to angle C, okay? And so, but also at this step, a perfectly valid thing to do instead of doing this would have been just use law of science, but either works. All right, so it depends on the thing you're trying to solve, I guess. If you if if you only had 
That's the only if you use Clang. Not sure. Oh yeah, so let me go back to that. I know exactly what you're asking. Let's go back to here. Notice here, if I had angle, side, angle, or side, angle, angle, I'm going to be using law of science, right? Because here, in either of these cases, I know, I know a companion set. By what I mean a companion set, I mean I know an I know an angle and and the side. So if I, if I know two angles. If I know two angles, I know three angles, right? If you know two angles, by default, you really know three, right? So here, by default, I know the third angle, right? I can just calculate it, right? And then here, I'm given, I know an angle and a side, and I can calculate this side from that and this side from that, right? Here, I know all the angles and a side, and calculate the side and the side, right? So if I know two angles, I'm going to be using law of sines, right? If and then here, if I know an angle and a side that looks like this, I mean, because I know the angle and the side across from it, right? I'm going to be using the law of sines as well. Here, in this case, if I know all the sides, I can figure out one of the angles, and once I know one of the angles, I can use anything to solve the rest, or the other one, which will go, which should be the next example if I'm not crazy. Um, is this the end of that? Yeah, I just gave my whole page for that. All right, and here, let's do this. Here I know side angle side, and so let's let's kind of write down this triangle and explain why it makes we have to use cosine for this instead of law of sines, right? So here I know this angle here, which is 46.5 degrees. I know this side, which is 10.5, and I know this side, which is 18. Okay. And I'll leave off A equals and B equals and all this. So do I know a, correspond, a corresponding set of pairs? Do I know do I know A and its side? Well actually let me leave it. Do I know A and its side at its angle? No, right? So I can't I can't form that ratio. Do I know C and its uh, angle C and its side? No. I know one of the things. I know what little c is equal, but I do not know what this is. So I cannot use the law of signs to give me that either. Do I know B and its side? Well, no, I, I know the side of B, right? But I don't know the angle B, right? And so no matter how I put together a lot of signs, I'm going to have two unknowns, right? I literally have two, two unknowns. So so if there's more sides, you lose cosines. If you know where I'm going to lose sines, uh, yes. Here, the only ones that are a little bit vague about that, if I have a, an angle and two sides, one time you use a lot of cosines, one time you use a lot of signs, OK? Um, it'll make it obvious what you're trying to do. Let's say I'm not, I'm gonna not use the word obvious. A good indicator of which one to use is that you'll try to do one, you won't have in, enough information, then try to do with the other, okay? One of the two will pan out for you. Um, so in this case, since I do not know an angle and a side together, like I don't know both A's and I don't know both B's and I don't know both C's, that's going to force me to use cosine. If I know both A's, usually that means, or both B's or both C's, right? The angle in its side, usually that means use law of sines. Okay? So let's crunch through this. All right. Um, so what are we going to use? We're going to use A squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2ac cosine of a. And so I'm going to use this to find my uh, length a. So I'm going to use the law of cosines right here. Uh, that's b. That should be bc, sorry. bc cosine of a. Well, that means a is equal to the square root of this. And I'm going to take the positive square root because the negative square root, I don't have negative lengths, so that doesn't make any sense. So we'll just keep it the positive square root version. And do I know all this information? Yeah, I know what b is. Yeah, I know what c is. And I, yeah, I know what a is. So, and so you're going to be, so when you know all, when you know that if it's, angle, side, angle, you're going to be solving for the side, or no, I lied, if it's, this is side, angle, side, you're going to be solving for the last side, the side that goes to the angle, that's the first thing you'll solve for. 
All right, so let's crunch through what this number is. And so this will be 10.5 squared plus 18 squared minus 2 times 10.5 times 18 times the cosine of 46.5. You just crunch this through a calculator. And you're going to get that is roughly equal to 13.2. And so now I have 13.2. All right, so at this point, at this point, I want to find um, this angle here. And there's two ways of doing this. But now, so let me just explain the option. So option one would be to do laws of sine, right? Because I can do, I can do A over sine of A is equal to B over sine of B. And the only thing I don't know here is sine of B, right? So I can solve for B like we did before, right? Or since this is the cosine chapter, I'll solve it using cosine. I feel like example, I feel like example two is gonna be ambiguous. Actually, if we know two is a sign, so two, two sides of the triangle, we can always force the, the, if I know two sides of a triangle in between them, there's always a triangle. So if I know if I know this angle and I know this length and I know this length, no matter how weird um, these lengths are, right? So I can have them equal. There's always a triangle I can make. So even if one was like you know like little and I had like a huge angle, right? I can still make that triangle. So this one is actually never ambiguous. Um, only the angle side side one is, or side side angle. <laughs> Some things I, I have to relearn. Um, can you switch back and forth? Can you switch back and forth between sine and cosine? Yeah, let's actually do that. Let's actually, in fact, we've used this. Now we have more information. We're gonna solve for sine of B. So sine of, so B is equal to the inverse sine of um, let me see if I can solve this correctly. B sine of A over A. And then here we just crunch that through. <sighs> so B is 10.5. Sine of A is 46.5. And then here the sine of 13.2. So I figured out what that is. Oh, this is inverse sine, sorry. Crunch through that number. I'm gonna get B is approximately um, 35.3 degrees. And so once I get that, I can just take 180. So here I can switch back, right? So I use cosine for the first one. Now I can just use law of sines because law of sines is easier, I guess. Less numbers to crunch through, right? Than any cosine one. So here, I know what one of them was, it was 46.5, the other one was uh, 35.3, and that leaves me with 98.2, and does that make sense? And the question is, once you get these angles, make sure they make sense, right? The bigger the angle, the longer the length, right? So here, my smallest angle was 35, that gave me the smallest length, the second one is 46, that gave me a second, and the middle length, right? So my middle angle is the middle length. This is 92 or 98.2 degrees for C. That gives me my longest length. So it makes sense. So when you solve these triangles, just check it in your head. Does the do the angles and the sides correlate, right? And what do I mean by that? Is the is like if A, if B is the smallest side and A is the middle side and C is the largest side, is the angle B the smallest angle, the angle A the set the middle angle, and, the, and angle angle C the largest angle. And if that coincides, you, it's a nice, quick, easy way to do a rough check, right? You don't really mess up something. All right, so let's do let's do an awful problem. Just get it done. All right, so. So, um, let me open up something. Um, let me see if I, let me see if the book had a, oh, let me go to this. So let's do this. 
Let's see if I can help you kind of dig through this a little bit. Let me use the book. Let me actually show you the real book that is supposedly for this class, but we decided not to be for this class. And anyway, I'll do this up super fast. So here we have, hi, thank you. Thank you, book. Um, so here we have a fun little problem. I don't know. It depends on your definition of fun, I guess. Um, so let me just, um, so we have a pilot that sets off from the airports and heads uh, no north 20 east, flying at 200 miles per hour for an hour. And after he makes a course correction, he heads north 30 east for a half hour. After that, the engine travel force makes an emerging landing. What's the, what's the distance between the airport and the final point of his landing? and find his variance from the airport. So what are we asking here? So, um, so let me see if I can explain how bearings work real quick for you guys. So here, here's it from the book. So let me give you the example from the book so this should help you. Um, so here, um, in the navigation, so given bearings, it's an acute angle measured due north and south. And so basically, so if I'm north 20 east, that means from north, I'm going 20 degrees to the east. Here's north 26 south, so south 70 degrees north. And so that's how the bearings work in navigation. For anyone who wants to be a pilot, something to know. I probably will avoid this on the exam. Um, I've done flight traveling before okay so so let's 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 go through this so um this is the problem i just pulled it from the example from the book right so here if i'm traveling north 20 east i mean this degree here is 20 and this degree here is 40 right and so here i've gotten the this is 20 miles this is 40 miles right so um and so here we're going to try to figure out from that, how to do all this. And so let me do this on the paper so you can see everything I'm doing. So, all right, so if I set that, so let's draw this. Let's just draw the same thing we just saw before. So here we're going to go 20 degrees here, right? So this is 20 degrees and we're going 200 miles per hour. So if we go 200 miles, this will be 200 miles, right? And then we make a court expression here. So we're gonna go in at 40 degrees here and we're gonna go 100 miles. Okay. So let's see if we can't figure out All right, so how are we going to figure out these angles? Does anyone know? Let's let you think on that for a second. How would I figure out these angles? So this, so here we have a side angle side. And which angle do I know? Do I know this angle? Do I know this angle? Or do I know this angle? I'll give you a hint. We should probably know the angle between the two of them, right? Because we're in law of cosines. So are the angles complementary? Um, Let's see if I can explain how to do this, explain this the easiest, right? So here, if I'm traveling, let's see if I can explain this so I don't get people too lost. Here I'm going at 20 degrees, right? And then here I make a course direction of another 20 degrees, right? So that means this angle here, <laughs> so here I'm 20 degrees off, right? Here I'm 40 degrees off, and so the the difference between this and a straight line is 20 degrees, right? Because here a straight line is 180 degrees, right? And so if I differ, if I move, if I do a course correction, so I'm doing, so for my true north here and my true north here, so north and north, right? 
if this is 20 and this is 40, that means that the angle between these two would have to be 120 minus, so 20, 40 minus 20 is 20, so that's the difference between the two from a straight line, right? From a straight line, the difference here is 20 degrees, right? Because it's 20 and 20. And that gives me that angle is 160. Does that make kind of sense how I got that? Because here, if I'm 20 degrees off, right? And then I move another 20 degrees off from that line. So here, let's just look at it this way. If I reorientated myself, if I'm drawing, if I'm going down this line, and then I increase my angle by 20, well, from the straight line, that means that the rest of this was 100 and, uh, 160, right? That's what's going on here. So from here, the straight line, I know this is 20, 20 more, right? 40, 40 uh, minus the original 20. So this is 160. So this is the angle I know. I know the 160 angle here. So the first thing I'll solve for, the very first thing I'll solve for, here I have, I have, uh, so let's, this is a big mess. <laughs> this is a big mess. So let's, let's clean it up a little bit. Let's, let's draw a nicer triangle. So here I have 200, here I have 100, and here I have, I know this is 160. Everyone okay with me up to this point? Yes, okay. All right, so here I'm given an angle, or side, angle, side. So the first thing I wanna solve for is the corresponding side. And so in this case, I'm going to say, so I'm gonna be solving Oh, let's just say for kicks, this is a, um, this is B, this is C. Yeah, just for kicks, right? A, B, and C, right? Um, so I'm gonna solve for this side right here. And so we'll call this little b. So little b is gonna be b squared is equal to a squared minus r plus c squared minus 2ac cosine of b. I know what this is, and so I wanna solve for this. And so here we're gonna say a or b, sorry, in this case, is equal to the square root of a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cosine of b. This is just pulling it straight from the other page. Um, we're going to plug in those numbers. I'm going to plug in those numbers. And so here I get the square root of 200 plus the square root uh, plus 100 minus 2 times 200 minus 100 times the cosine of 160. Crunch that through, you're going to get approximately equal to 87,587. Um, and does that make sense? Yeah, this is definitely the longer side by a large margin, right? And so here I get a, the longer length by a large margin. What also is this? This is also the distance between the airport and the final landing point, right? Because this is where they land, right? And so that is the answer to the first one, miles, right? That's the answer to the first one. The second one was the bearing, what's the bearing from the airport? So what's this bearing right here? So I want to figure out what this angle is. If I figure out what this angle is, what I must then add 20 to it to figure out the bearing. So here, um, I have lots of fun information. I have, oops, 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 oops. I didn't take the square root. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> The square root of this, hold on, I'm being, I'm being silly, is 900, 9, 295 and uh, 85th. I was suddenly thinking about it, it's like, that doesn't make any sense, right? Because if this was 8,000, if I add up these two lengths, they're not gonna equal this. And so there's no way, if, if in every single triangle, two sides cannot be greater in length than um, the third side, because then it's impossible to make a triangle, okay? 
Um, so this is the, this is this. And then what are we going to figure out? A. Well, here I know these two. I know what a the opposite of a would be this. And so here to figure out that, I'm going to use I'm going to use uh, sine of a is equal to a over sine of sine of b over b. Solve for a. A is equal to the inverse sine of No, 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 A equals inverse sine of A, sine of B over B, which in our case will be uh, A is 100, sine of B will be the sine of 160, all over B, which is 295 for 9 fifths. Take the inverse sine, inverse sine, sorry, I'm running out of room. Um, and that gives me roughly 6.63 degrees. So that's roughly 6.63 degrees. But remember, we already were 20 off of that. So it'll be 20 plus that, 6.63 degrees, is equal to, which gives us our bearing, which implies, I'm going to say north, and then we're going to have 26.3 degrees east. So that's the real bearing. Oh, 26.63, sorry. This is way more complicated than I planned to go through, but I did want to go through one of the harder problems that way when you get to some of the other easier ones, it makes somewhat sense. The last thing we want to go through here is the uh, area of a triangle. Um, And so we're going to use head rounds for now, and that should not take us more than a few minutes. All right. All right, so here, if we know all the sides of a triangle, we can find out the area. And so we find something called the semi-perimeter, which is just half of all the sides added up. And then here we just take the area is equal to um, the semi-perimeter, and then each of the, the semi-perimeter minus each of the side take the square root that equal to that. It's a, to actually prove it, it takes a long time, but in practice, it's really quite simple. Um, in practice, so let's, let's say a, ban, a businessman who buys a triangle lot in a busy downtown section. There's a figure. I can show it to you real quick, um, since you guys don't have the book. Uh, here'd be the figure, right? So if it's 315 feet here, 280 feet here and 125 feet here, and he wants to know what's how much how much property did he buy, right? Well, how does he figure that out? Well, he can just do um, find the area. You need to figure it out, really. And so here the area. So the first thing we want to do is find the semi perimeter. So the semi perimeter is equal to 100 125 plus 280 plus 315 all divided by two. Crunch through that number. Um, you get 300. Oops. 360. So the first thing you do is find out what this S is, and that's just add up all the sides, divide by 2. Then you can say the area is equal to the square root of 360 plus um, 360 minus our A, and so our A right here is 125. 360 minus uh, our B, which is 280, and then 360 here minus our C, which will be uh, 315. Crunch through this number, and you get it to be roughly equal to 17,402 feet squared, um, since this is going to be the area being feet squared. And that's it. Okay. Heron's formula is pretty, um, or Heron, I don't know if it's Heron or Heron. You know, I should probably know how to say all these one of the names. Um, it's fairly straightforward, way more straightforward than anything else we did, right? <laughs> um, so that's it for this. Um, class is over in a minute, so we've ended right on time. Go try the homework. Ask me questions from the homework. Maybe Heron is fish. Yeah, that's what I think it is. So, so it should be Heron, not Heron, but... 
it depends, I guess, I guess what, what matters for the, how to pronounce it, it depends on the country of origin, right? Because <laughs> um, different countries, you know, pronounce the same name differently or spell this, or, and some countries spell the same name differently or sometimes they spell the same pronouncing. There's, there's a lot to it. Um, anyways, good luck, guys. Enjoy your day and... I'll see you tomorrow. I'll try to get the grading done soon. And then I will work on the homework. I'll probably grade before writing the homework. Even though I should probably write the homework before I grade. Yeah, I'll probably write tomorrow's homework before I grade. Um, that way, at least that's up. Okay. All right. Good luck, guys. Really do try this. Really come with me for questions tomorrow because laws of science and cosines, um, it's just practice. The more practice you get, the easier it is. Watching me do it's fun, but you really just need to crunch the physical crunching tool before you to learn. All right, guys, you enjoy the rest of your day and take care, my friends. Bye.